Corkery here with a Bible blessing from John chapter 13, verses 1 to 11. Now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of the world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from the supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. That was why he said, Not all of you are clean. As we come to chapter 13 in the Gospel of John, we mark an important and interesting division in the book. In order to highlight this division, I'd like to briefly contrast the first 12 chapters in the Gospel of John with the following five, chapters 13 to 17. In the first 12 chapters of the Gospel of John, we have the actions of Jesus Christ. In contrast with 13 to 17, which give us the teachings of Jesus Christ. The first 12 chapters give us the public ministry of Jesus Christ. And the following five chapters, 13 to 17, give us the private ministry of Jesus Christ. Jesus ministers privately to his disciples. The time span in verses, or sorry, chapters 1 to 12 take place in about three years. The time span in 13 to 17 take place in a few days. Now there's another important contrast that I'd like to highlight here for you, a contrast between chapter 12 and chapter 13. The Jews in Jerusalem, had rejected Jesus Christ. That's how chapter 12 ends. Why did they reject him? Well, they rejected him because they were expecting a king, a sovereign, a ruler, a conqueror, a prince. In chapter 13, by contrast, Christ presents himself to his disciples, not as a king, a conqueror, a ruler, or a sovereign, but as a humble servant, as a man ready to lay down his life for the sins of the world. In 13, he does not take a position of rulership or kingship or exaltation, but he takes the position of a slave or a servant and he's ready to lay down his life for his friends. Chapter 12 ends on a note of uh, hatred and hostility. The Jews expressed their hatred and hostility towards the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and rejected him. Now we have a note of love. Jesus loved his own who were in the world, and he loved them to the fullest extent, ready now to lay down his life for them. 12 ends with a cloud of darkness overshadowing the scene. And 13 opens up with the bright beams 
of the love of Christ shining upon his disciples. I want to outline this uh, these verses by giving you two L's. First of all, from verses 1 to 5, we have our first L, which is love. Christ expresses his love for his disciples. Then our second L, verses 6 to 11, is learning. The disciples learn the important lesson of humility and servanthood from the Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's look at verse 1. And in verse 1, we learn that this scene took place just before the Feast of Passover. And it tells us that Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father. And these words remind us that the scene that Jesus now finds himself in, the predicament and circumstances that are now upon him, were not a surprise to him. This was not a victory for the forces of evil. It was not a failure in the ministry and mission of Jesus Christ. But this hour that Jesus spoke of was predetermined and foreordained of God before the foundations of the world. He came into the world to suffer, to bleed, and to die, and to atone for the sins of mankind. And now he was ready to offer himself, not because his mission had failed, but because this was the moment that God had ordained, and he was ready now to drink the cup that the Father had given to him. So it tells us in the last part of verse 1 that he loved his own who were in the world, and he loved him to the end, or he loved them to the fullest extent. He loved them and gave himself for them as a servant. He took the lowly place. He was ready now to be humiliated, to suffer the agonies and horrors and torments of the cross, to bear the sins of the world, and to suffer and to die for those who would believe in him. And so now he teaches the disciples humility. He realized that the hour had come. He realized that one of his own disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, had betrayed him. And we see again that conflict between light and darkness, between the forces of evil and the will of God. And even the forces of evil, as we see them at work, we must realize that these were all within the foreordained plan of God. It was not a surprise to God that his son was rejected, that Judas would betray him. The devil had now entered into Judas. And yet all things now we can see were working together for good, fulfilling the purpose of God. So Jesus was ready now to return to the Father. The supper was now coming to an end. And it tells us that he laid aside his garments and he took a towel and wrapped it around his waist. He took water in a basin and he began to wash the disciples' feet. Not taking the position of a conqueror or a ruler, but now taking the position of a humble servant, ready to serve others. And Jesus began to wash the disciples' feet. And as he began to wash the disciples' feet, we come to our second L, learning. Peter had a lesson to learn, the lesson of servanthood. As Peter uh, was about to have his feet washed by the Lord, he began by saying, Lord, do you wash my feet? Peter was offended in a way. He felt that it was inappropriate for Christ to take the position of the servant. He was like the Jews and the Jewish establishment. He didn't understand that Christ must suffer and die. He didn't understand his mission and purpose, so he had a lesson to learn. And Jesus answered Peter and he said, he said, what I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. 
He didn't understand the necessity of Christ's death. He didn't understand the necessity of Christ's humiliation. He didn't understand the servanthood of Jesus Christ. And like the Jews in Jerusalem, he expected a conqueror and a ruler. Peter objected again and he said, you will never wash my feet. He would not allow it, showing his complete misunderstanding of the role and mission of Jesus Christ. But Jesus went on to teach Peter and he said, if I do not wash you, you have no share with me. And many people today still do not understand the mission of Jesus Christ. They don't understand that without being covered in the blood of Christ, without being washed in the blood of Christ, they can never come into the presence of God. People in the world today worship various gods, have different religious philosophies. But I want to remind you that without being washed in the blood of, in the blood of Christ, there is no salvation. And the apostles taught this also. They said, there is no other name given under heaven among men whereby you must be saved. So the question we all must ask, are we washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the lamb? And then Peter, when Jesus insisted that he partake in this washing, because if he refused, he would have no share with Christ. Then Peter said, Lord, not only my feet, but my hands and my head. He was willing to be washed. He thought if some washing was good, more must be better. But Jesus again reproved him and he said, you've already been washed. How so? Well, he was washed. You are clean, Jesus said in another place, through the word that I have spoken unto you. We are made clean in the sight of God by believing in his word and trusting in the promises of God. So Jesus insisted that he only needed his feet to be washed. He needed to accept the forgiveness of Christ and to walk with Christ by faith. And then Jesus went on to say that not all of you are clean. Not all of you believe my word. And he knew that the devil had entered into Judas, that Judas was now ready to betray him. And he said these things because he knew that his hour was come and that Judas was ready to betray him. So this is today's Bible blessing. Christ came as a humble servant. Christ came to suffer and to die. He suffered alone in humility, in shame, and in agony. And in doing so, he expressed in the fullest possible way the love of God for humanity. Have you trusted?